Okay, <clears throat> so I wanted to create a video for people who may not have a project idea and or have concerns about meeting the criteria for the assignment of the final project. <clears throat> so I wanted to create a video that basically in my perspective covers all the, the criteria for the assignment. And I've already created the notes. I go through these prior to presenting them regularly to make sure that things work properly. So I'm going to post these notes to for week 14. And then down here you can see that basically it meets all the criteria except for the tool. <clears throat> but I also created a tool if and I'm going to put a picture of that up on the team site. So Without further ado, let's get started. <clears throat> so th there's a, the only oddity about this is that to keep it simple, I'm wanting to use this download. It's actually an Esri download of the National Highway Layer, and it's in GeoJSON format. So don't let that fool you. Um, all you need to do is copy this uh, URL and put it in your browser and it downloads to your directory. And I'm putting mine in the out directory in my week 14 project. And then all I need is two plugins to support this activity. Mm -hmm. One is the lat long tools. <clears throat> and we've gone over that and used that in the past. And the, a new one is called QNEAT3. And basically it's a distance tool. So I want to use that for, um, this process. So I'm going to create a new project file, add that file, the GeoJSON freeway layer to that file, and then I'm going to use a, uh, I, I did use Google Roadmaps, but I think I kind of like um, the open source better, but let's take a look at that. That one doesn't really matter too much what you use there, but I'm going to add the GeoJSON layer first, and I always like to do that with my subject layer because, you know, it sets the projection. So here I am attaching it. I'm going to select the line string and hit add layers. And it's it's kind of a weird file system or a wheel a weird file type because it's a streaming type layer. They use it on the internet. Uh, it's a um, kind of a weird one, at least compared to like what we've been using as the shape files. But this is what it looks like. I like to make mine red. <clears throat> and then I do want to add a layer, but I really like the OSM standard layer um, for this. But this is what it looks like. I want to change that in my notes. So then I want to create a start point and the start point I'm going to use is from home. What made me think of this was my trip to Atlanta. You know, Google said it was eight hours and I just wanted to map it using a, you know, pretty creative way and, and to see and update this process for this specific tool. So here's the notes. So I'm going to go to the light long tool and go to the multiple entry, even though we're going to just do one. I'm going to put that coordinate in here and hit this check mark. I'm going to add a label to it. In this case, we're only going to use one, but you could actually put more than one and it does some. This tool does some pretty neat stuff, so uh, might want to check that out sometime. But I'm going to put a label one in the label because it does need to be filled in for this tool to work properly. Then I'm going to select the create vector layer. 
and then I'm going to exit out of this tool. So that put me a point <clears throat> basically right in Huntington where um, lost it, where the interstate, where you come out from town and get on the interstate on I-64. So now I have all of my um, plugins loaded and I have my my file. I have my freeway layer. I'm going to save this and ex just export it because I want to export it as a GeoJSON also. And I want to save it to <clears throat> the directory that I'm working in, which is the out directory. I'm just going to call it start. So now I have the start layer. And the start layer could be actually could be more than one. I mean, depends on how you want to use or if you want to create a tool. I did create a tool. <clears throat> it's not needed for this to um, um, meet all the requirements, but I made a tool for it and I think it works pretty well. <clears throat> so the next thing we want to do is run the QNE tool. So we did all these steps. We chose add the location, added the number one, create vector layer, layer created, a, and I saved it out to the out directory. So now is where you need to load and make sure you have the Q, QNEAT3 tool loaded. And we want to select the ISO area as point cloud from layer command. ISO areas, point cloud from layer right here. I didn't start my little highlighter tool. Let me start that now. So just launch that. So the network layer is the freeway system. The starting point is the start layer that we just created. The unique point ID field here is called label. And that was what came from um, when we put it into the light long tool. And it might not work properly if, if you didn't do that right. So be aware of that. And now I'm going to put this value in there for ISO area distance. And that distance is critical because there's a lot of ways to use this tool, but this is like the maximum distance it's going to go out in kind of a radial direction. And I just want it to go out all the way. <clears throat> so I, that's why I put that number in there. I, it, it's not a, a number that uh, I measured in any way. And then I want to set the optimization criterion to shortest path. Distance optimized, it is that. You want to make sure these advanced parameters are open for these next, for doing these next um, settings. Entry cost calculation method planar. Planar. Entry cost calculation method planar. Default speed. 5.0. <clears throat> now, every time I've done this, that's already been set. So you can either type it in or not. <clears throat> and then the topology tolerance. And this is specific to the layer that you're using. Um, it's it's kind of how far apart the lines are and how far apart they are before the program finds it and uses it. So I found on this one that I'm using it, it needed to be set to 0 0.025. So now I'm going to output a point cloud. And let's see, what am I going to call it? What am I going to call it? Um, network. Distance. 
And it's a GeoJSON file too. So what's important about the file type is that if if this if that layer has uh, field names longer than eight characters, a shapefile truncates them because it's an older format that didn't have the same capabilities. So if if you make it a GeoJSON, you're able to keep the same field names and everything will work properly. Um, so I'm going to run this. pretty fast. I really can't believe for what it's doing. It's that fast. Because there's lots of nodes there. And I'll show you what this looks like. Covered the whole United States, all the highways. <clears throat> OK, so I want to show you the field attribute table too. Um, and this is what I'm talking about because I, I initially I was doing things and I was having problems with this field right here. Um, this is the origin point ID and this is the, the number one that you put into your um, lat long tool for the label. And if I was using a shape file, it truncated this this name and it just didn't work. So you have to follow these steps pretty accurately for it to work. So now we have a point layer. If you open that tool and read it, you know, a lot of times the documentation isn't all that good on some of these things, but you just have to test them. So when I tested these, I went in to measure the distance in between them. And let's see, let me go to my start point. And basically, through all my testing, the results are in meters. So be aware of that. <clears throat> and what we're going to do is calculate miles and hours from that cost field uh, from this network distance. This is the cost field. So these values are in meters. And we're going to create two new fields, miles and hours, just based on real numbers. So let's do that now. I'm going to open up my attribute table. I'm going to turn on the editor. I'm going to make two new fields, miles. I'm going to make that real decimal. And then another one, and I'm going to call it hours. Same same type, use the default. And so now I want to fill those in. And I'm going to save this just so I don't lose it. You know, we saved it to a, it's not a scratch file, we saved it. And so now I'm going to go into the field calculator and I'm going to use these values here these formulas to calculate miles. I'm going to update existing field because we just made it. I'm going to select my field, which is miles. I'm going to paste this formula in there. It's not a hard formula. It's just a conversion formula from meters to miles. And I'm going to hit OK. I'm going to save it. Then I'm going to open the editor again. I'm going to calculate my, open up my uh, field calculator, update existing field, and do the same thing for hours, except in this case, I'm going to copy this formula. Now, in my testing, what I found out is, Atlanta is about an eight hour drive, 
Well, for me to get to that location that I knew of as a validation point for this process, I had to make an average speed of 60 miles per hour. So that's where that value comes from. So I'm going to save it. And I'm going to exit out of the attribute table. Now to test it, and this is what I did a lot of prior to making this, I want to set this filter so I can look to see those values work properly. Hours. So I want to filter the network. And I'm going to click, well, all I have to do is really paste this filter in there from the notes. I'm going to test it. And then I'm going to hit OK. So that's it. That's my distances. So that's how far you can drive in eight hours from Huntington, West Virginia. I've always been enamored by that because we could get to a lot of places from here. And uh, and this this kind of is like proving it. This is the mathematical way of proving it, of showing it, of depicting it, of analyzing it, of using the tool of taking the data and you know making it work for you and that's what i have always want to show so we've done those phases of the of this uh, these steps test the filter using the filter now what we're going to do is create a raster file using the filtered eight hour or less layer created layer create a raster layer using the 10 interpolation command so I'm going to go ahead and copy 10 interpolation. It's a tool over here, so I can just paste it into my toolbox. It's also showing up as a recent command, but all you have to do is enter, <clears throat> enter that, find it and click on it. So I want to use the filtered layer network distance, and I want to make sure the interpol interpolation attribute is miles this time. So then I want to add that layer and what makes this unique, this tool is it, it can create, um, it can use multiple types of layers, points, la points, lines and polygons to create this um, interpolation. But ours is points, so I've already added it. Linear is what's set in the file linear. Now, to the extent we just want to use the calculated filtered um, network distance. <clears throat> and then the way I do things usually is I test it. So in this case, it defaulted for me to 0.1. And you know what? That looked pretty good. So pixel size of 0.1. That's obviously, I think, in decimal, or not in decimal degrees, but um, um, degrees, minutes and seconds type of calculation. But it works. <clears throat> and then I'm going to save that interpolated file to my directory, a week 14 out directory. And I'm just going to call it point or <clears throat> interpolation. And it's a TIFF file. Okay. So I'm going to turn off my points. I want to show you what that looks like. So it made this layer from all those points. Uh, it's based on the mile, so it's based on distance. I'm going to change my symbology to pseudo. I'm just going to use the default here. I'm going to set my transparency to about half. And so that's what it looks like. So these colors represents miles and the roads. 
distances from this point. So if I turn off my layer here, you can you can see how that looks. I think it's one of the neater tools on there because, you know, we use our um, phones and mapping now or maps like like um, the ones you can find online to travel now to set times and distance to estimate, you know, how long it will get there. But I think this is neat because it, it shows you a practical application of that. I mean, I could do a lot of things with this. I mean, measure how many cities, how much the population is for these larger cities. Most of these larger cities you can almost see in this this uh, network layer <clears throat> because they have these bypasses on them. Anyway, that's that's the geography for today. And I like this OSM layer because it 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 lets that um, raster shine through. You can see it really pretty good. So that w went through this launch 10, calculate the point, pixel size, save file. <clears throat> so this is the criteria for our final project. And this process meets four of the five raster manipulation. I th at one point, I called that DEM manipulation, but it's basically the same thing in, in the assignment. I went out there and changed it from like DEM slash raster. And then raster calculator, mathematical functions. This in this case, we use the uh, field calculator and use mathematical functions. Now, in this case, I didn't create a model tool in the in this video, but I did create a tool and I'll show that to you here in a minute. Create new data sets from existing data. Yes, we did that. Develop a useful process from open source data. And that's to me. That's what we did, and hopefully that's that's what you're doing with your final project. If you have problems, hopefully this will help you if you know in crunch time, if it comes down to. Um, um, you know, you wanting to know if your project meets all the criteria. But now I want to show you the tool that I created and I'm going to copy this just in case you want to do this too, but I created this distance command. Here's what it looks like. And I'm going to capture this and put it out there. <clears throat> but it's basically what we just went through using the ISO area point tool. It uh, uses the field calculator to calculate miles and hours. It uses these input point ID field. Um, in this case, it defaults to label. I'll show it to you here in a minute. Miles per hour, you can you can play with the miles per hour output to calibrate it. You can calibrate it based on another different trip area, you know, with Google values if you want to, Google Maps. And here's one unique thing that um, you do on this here. You know, we, we talked about the output. This output is coming from, you know, the point cloud layer. This is the formula it's using and things down here, but I s check this dependency because I wanted to make sure it functioned properly. This point cloud has to exist before this thing runs, so I selected that. And the same way with this field calculator option here too, um, except that I wanted it to make sure that the field calculator miles ran previously. And so, and so that's really it. Let me show you how it looks as far as a tool. These are all default default values. Some of the values <clears throat> I just left and set into the the tool itself. Nope, that's not the tool. These values itself, like this distance, I didn't make it an option. You know, the default value. It, uh, for um, speed and the tolerance. I just hard coded those into the tool because I thought they were OK values for now. So anyway, give that a try. Let me show you how this works. 
I mean, it's no different. 60 point layer, network distance, label field. Oh, no, that's wrong. It's the start point layer. And this is the road network. And this is going to create a temporary file, but it is a GeoJSON file. So there it is. It's not filtered right now, and but you know it does the same thing as we just went through. The one thing I want to mention before I end this is this interpolation file. I think is pretty cool because one of the things you could do now too is make uh, contour lines that show like miles. So let's look at it. it every 50 miles because it's based on miles. Attribute name. Oh, we want to call that miles. Because that's the result, no offset. So let's run it, make some 50 mile contours. There we go. <clears throat> so there's just so much you can do for whatever kind of of um, um presentation you want to provide or write you know with gis data and it's all open source and and i think this is just pretty neat stuff but anyway that's all i have y'all have a good thanksgiving <laughs>